Since ancient times, narratives about a malevolent entity, the Antichrist, have been recounted in scriptures, eliciting a mix of fear and curiosity among believers around the globe. Imagine for a moment that such an entity is already among us, concealed in a specific and unique location, the Kaaba, situated at the pulsating core of Mecca. This hypothesis may seem as astonishing as it is unexpected, but according to some biblical exegeses, there are unfathomable truths behind these enigmas. I invite you to embark on a journey of discoveries that could revolutionize the way you perceive the world. What or who indeed rests inside the Kaaba? Daily, Muslims from around the world turn to Mecca in their prayers, a demonstration of faith performed five times a day. Mecca, the birthplace of the Prophet Muhammad, transcends its importance as a sacred site in Islam, representing a beacon of spirituality. However, it is the Kaaba that captures the gaze of pilgrims seeking a deep spiritual connection, not only with Mecca, but with this object of ancient and enigmatic veneration. The Kaaba, erected in the heart of Mecca, goes beyond being a mere architectural structure. It is a mosque imbued with profound spiritual symbolism. Allow me to unveil a secret of this sanctuary. Inside it lies a mysterious artifact, the Black Stone. This relic has been the subject of fascination and theories over the centuries, with various hypotheses being formulated to explain its origin and significance. The mystery surrounding the Black Stone is profound and guarded only by a restricted group of initiates within the sacred walls of the Kaaba. This enigmatic object, steeped in ancient traditions, has its secrets known to few, including Jesus, a prominent figure in the scriptures with a remarkable ability to decipher divine mysteries and prophecies. In the sacred scriptures, Jesus is portrayed as someone with a deep understanding of the most hidden mysteries. In the Bible, he is a voice of warning about spiritual snares, with an emphasis on the threat of the beast of the apocalypse. This theme is particularly relevant for those studying biblical figures like Baal, Beelzebub, and the Antichrist, which symbolize evil and spiritual degeneration. In the Apocalypse, a crucial part of the New Testament, the narrative is laden with symbolism and apocalyptic visions. Notably, in Revelation chapter 13 verse 14, as per the King James Version, there is a mention of a deceiving image that causes the inhabitants of the earth to go astray. Worshipping the beast, a figure that appears to rise from a deadly wound. The text continues to weave its story with deep metaphors and symbolism. For example, in Revelation chapter 19, verses 15 and 16, it discusses a sword, often seen as a symbol of the justice and divine truth emanating from Christ. The narrative becomes even more complex and enigmatic in the book of Revelation, particularly in chapter 17, verse 8. There, the appearance of an enigmatic creature is described, the beast with multiple heads emerging from unknown abysses. This appearance surprises especially those who are unaware of ancient prophecies. The beast, existing in ancient times, absent in the present but destined to return, symbolizes a mystery that challenges conventional notions of time. For those whose names are not written in the Book of Life, the return of this entity will be a shocking event, anticipating both its resurrection and its eventual defeat. And it's shifting our focus from Christianity to Islam, we are introduced to an object of profound reverence and mystery, the black stone located in the Kaaba in Mecca. In contrast to some Islamic interpretations that attribute a divine origin to it, there is a less conventional and darker theory. According to this hypothesis, the black stone would not be a sacred fragment sent from the heavens, but rather a relic related to the fall of a malevolent figure, possibly linked to Baal a deity revered in antiquity, now seen in monotheistic traditions as a symbol of idolatry and deviation from true faith. This theory suggests that Baal was expelled from paradise, with his essence being captured in the black stone, marking it as an emblem of seduction and spiritual corruption. This point marks the intersection of biblical prophecies and Islamic traditions, a territory where faith, interpretation, and the search for truth intertwine in a complex and profound manner. In ancient accounts, the existence of a powerful entity marked by disobedience is described, and it was exiled to the dark regions known in certain cultures as the Abyss or Sheol. This is an age-old legend perpetuated by visionaries and teachers throughout the ages. At the culmination of the struggle between order and chaos, ancient scriptures assure that the power of light will triumph. 
In apocalyptic prophecies, especially in the book of Revelation, a decisive victory is narrated. Specifically in Revelation chapter 19, verse 20, as per the King James Version of the Bible, the fate of false prophets and evil entities is described. They will be defeated and cast into the lake of fire, representing the final judgment and purification. The Apostle Paul, through his epistles, also discusses this cosmic battle. He mentions the figure of the man of lawlessness, who is being restrained until the opportune moment for his manifestation. The narrative extends to a sacred location, the Black Stone in Mecca, a center of reverence and belief. Currently it occupies a central place in the spiritual practices of many, but layers of history reveal that this place was once a convergence point for ancient civilizations, a site where pagan temples stood, and prayers were offered to misguided deities. In his messages, Jesus warned about the challenges and trials that were approaching. He spoke through metaphors and stories, seeking to convey an understanding of the heavenly kingdom. One of these stories is the parable of the farmer who plants quality seeds in his field. However, during the night a cunning enemy sows seeds of weeds in the same soil. The farmer's servants, upon realizing what had happened, ask if they should pull out the weeds. Jesus clarifies that the good seeds represent people who follow the path of righteousness, while the weeds symbolize those who follow the path of iniquity, influenced by the evil one. At the end of times there will be a definitive separation between good and evil. The weeds will be removed and destroyed, but the wheat will be carefully gathered and kept. In his revelations, Jesus brings forth the figure of the great adversary, a multifaceted entity present in various scriptures. In the Bible, he is mentioned as the little horn in the book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 9, and described as the prince who is to come in Daniel 9.26. In other narratives, such as 1 Kings 16.32, he is associated with the pagan god Baal, and in Psalm 91, 13, he is likened to a mighty lion. These teachings of Jesus serve as a warning and guidance for the challenging times ahead, emphasizing the need for vigilance and fidelity to the principles of the heavenly kingdom. Continuing with these remarkable revelations, the entity mentioned is identified as the fearsome beast of the book of Revelation, as described in chapter 13, verse 1. It is also referred to as the man of sin, as stated in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 in the King James Version. In Matthew 12, 24, according to the same version, this figure is named Beelzebub, the leader of demons, and is further cited as the strong man in the same book in verse 29. This nefarious entity is recognized as the Antichrist, a force that rises in direct opposition to Jesus Christ attempting to corrupt the true nature of his saving sacrifice. His sa in this context, the representation of Allah in the Quran is seen as a personification of this antagonistic spirit, a figure of the Antichrist. I invite everyone to stand firm and not succumb to fear, for Jesus assures us with the promise of an ending where justice will prevail. He teaches us that in the last days angels will serve as divine selectors, separating the wheat from the chaff. Those who follow the path of righteousness will shine with the glory of their heavenly Father, while the chaff, representing evil, will be cast into the eternal fire, a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Apocalypse, in its thirteenth chapter, introduces us enigmatically to two terrifying figures. The first is the beast, a symbol of the Antichrist, and the second is the false prophet, who arises to support and propagate the lies of the Antichrist. They operate together, forming an evil alliance that attempts to mimic the holiness of the Trinity. It's curious to observe that in the Greek language the prefix anti can not only mean opposition, but also the idea of substitution or even representation. Therefore, when the Antichrist appears on the global stage, he will not present himself as a direct adversary of Christ, but as a cunning substitute. He will self-proclaim as the Messiah and Savior that many await, strongly attracting people from various beliefs and religious groups, with the aim of deceiving and diverting many from the right path. However, there is no reason to fear, for God has assured that which He has appointed for protection will be removed from the earth with the arrival of the Lord of Heaven. This spectacular event will occur at the sound of a supreme command, the voice of the archangel, and the divine trumpet sounding. Those who have died believing in Christ will rise first, followed by those who are alive, who will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the heavens, and thus they will be with the Lord eternally. Unlike what many fictional stories suggest, 
there will be no second chance of salvation for those who remain on earth. According to the words of Jesus in Revelation, those who are left will not have their names recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. However, the most important aspect to observe comes next, and it is essential to pay attention to understand the astonishing revelation that unfolds. This truth is emphasized in the book of Revelation, specifically in chapter 13, verse 8, and in chapter 17, verse 8. Jesus prophesied that all the inhabitants of the earth, except those whose names are written in the book of life, will worship the beast. This prophetic vision is reaffirmed in Revelation 17, 8 highlighting the astonishment of those whose names are not in the book of life when they witness the return of the beast. The belief in redemption through the sacrifice of Jesus is fundamental in the Christian faith and is considered the only route to salvation. Any line of thought or religious teaching that denies or modifies this central belief is seen as a distortion of the true role of Christ. Take, for example, Islam as represented in the Quran which offers an alternative perspective on Jesus without endorsing the notion of his redemptive role. In contrast, the Bible portrays Jesus as the Divine Son, the Mediator, the Redeemer, the Living Word, the Crucified Savior, and the Resurrected Lord. The correspondence between Jesus and the 351 Old Testament biblical prophecies is not seen as coincidental, but as evidence of his divinity and the legitimacy of his mission. It is vital to recognize the figure of Jesus in the Holy Scriptures, which brings a message of limitless love and redemption, and distinguish it from any other interpretations that may seek to downplay or alter the importance of His sacrifice. The Dome of the Rock, located in Jerusalem with its gleaming golden dome and blue walls, is a historic and religious landmark, especially in the Islamic faith, which celebrates this site as the place of Muhammad's ascent to heaven. Besides its impressive architecture, this location is also embroiled in debates and controversies that extend beyond its grand appearance, encompassing complex religious and historical issues. Inside this building there is an Arabic inscription, a significant marker for the Islamic faith. It conveys a message directed at the people of the book, a term used in Islam to refer to Jews and Christians. The inscription emphasizes the singularity of Allah and identifies Jesus named as the Messiah and the Son of Mary, as a divine messenger, a word from Allah given to Mary, and a spirit from Him. The inscription encourages faith in Allah and His messengers while discouraging acceptance of the Trinity, reiterating the belief that Allah is unique and has no offspring. This interpretation sharply contrasts with Christian beliefs about the divinity of Christ and the concept of the Holy Trinity. In Christianity, disregarding the divine nature of Christ or the Trinity is considered a serious error and is sometimes seen as a result of malevolent influences. This perspective is reinforced by biblical passages, such as in the King James Version of the Bible in Matthew 24. 1. Where Jesus announces the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, symbolizing the rejection of structures and doctrines that deviate from divine truth. For many Christians, this also represents the promise of Christ's return and the judgment of false prophets, reinforcing the belief in the imminent second coming of Jesus and the subsequent affirmation of true faith. 